talked a bit already about the relationship between conservatism and libertarianism, and you've said you do believe that there's a role for the state on certain issues. Now, I said I call myself a, a libertarian, and uh, I certainly believe that you know there is a you know certain uh, you know, way to live. There's a certain way society should be structured for it to be healthy. But uh, I'm always, you know, uncomfortable with, you know, using the, the force of, you know, government to um, uh, to force it onto, onto people. Like, and I'll use some mm. specific examples. Like, for example, I don't approve of, you know, uh, drug use or um, prostitution, but I always think that prohibiting something leads to a even worse worse outcome than, uh, you know, if we, if we have it legal. I mean, you just have to look at what happened in the United States with alcohol prohibition. Um, do you have a, a different mm. interpretation uh, about that? No, I think we'd agree very, very similarly. Um, I, oh. Prostitution is a hard one because... Um, I, I do lean very heavily towards libertarianism. Um, the the problem with prostitution is the severe exploitation of the women. Um, I don't believe prostitutes should be prosecuted, um, but I I'm not opposed, and and maybe I'm a hypocrite here as a libertarian hypocrite. Uh, maybe my libertarian credentials may be tarnished a bit when I say I do believe. Um, the clients of prostitutes should be prosecuted. Um, so, and I, I think very similarly. Uh, let me let me stick with prostitution because um, that's the hard one. It re it really is. Uh, there, yeah. Look, prosecuting prosecuting the the demand is is um, probably the good way to go because. Look, I, I don't care how many women say they want to do it. It is absolutely objectification and uh, um, what's the right word here? Commodification of people. It's the same reason why I – one of the reasons I object to homosexual marriage is it will inevitably end up – and I predict it now. You can have it on your show and show it in five, ten years whenever it happens. But it will end up in the commodification of children because there's not enough children to adopt. There's certainly not enough altruistic surrogacy opportunities. It will end up in commercial surrogacy, which is the commodification of women's bodies and children in themselves. And so the commodification of women, again, women's bodies, is just a terrible thing for, for government to permit. And, you know, under the, I guess this, under the spirit of, one of the government's role is, is protecting people um, from others, then I believe we should prosecute the men who would seek to commodify and objectify um, the, the gift of female sexuality to a transaction. Uh, I think that's, that's terrible. And it's exactly the same reason why we should promote marriage is because we should encourage men and women to be faithful and committed and exclusive to each other for life because not because it's a moral good and it is but because it's a social good it's the best interest of the government and society and and yeah social socialization our culture altogether is to have that as a as a constant thread so anything that undermines that should be seriously discouraged as to drugs i was having a, a conversation with a an MP who actually specialises in drug uh, rehab. And uh, I'm a big fan of Milton Friedman's arguments against prohibition of narcotics. And I will lose a lot of my Christian audience when I come out on your show and say, I think drugs should be legalised. Now, I think the supply of drugs should be regulated. And, and here's the solution we came up with. This is very detailed, so there might be holes in it. But... Um, too much. The devil's in the detail, they say. But uh, Milton Friedman essentially argues that by banning it, you create more profit, you create more supply. And by creating more supply, you create the consumption. And 
And there's a whole myriad of associated things that go on there. So by the government banning it, the government actually becomes a player in the drug industry. They make it really, really hard for the small players and essentially create a monopoly, a cartel that's incredibly profitable for the big players where those people can control and demand higher prices. And because there's much higher profit, there's much higher incentive to distribute it. And because they control the prices, they make more profit. And so there's more reason for them to get more consumption out there. They become very invested in a large take-up rate of, of, of drug use. And, and that op look, prohibition has clearly been a failure. There is no jurisdiction anywhere where banning drugs and prosecuting the users has ended up with a a, um, a a reduction, a positive result. It just doesn't do it. We've completely lost the, the drug war. The drug barons are winning. The drug dealers are winning. And the society is losing. So, you know, insanity, repeating the same thing and expecting a different outcome isn't a, isn't a good policy. But what if we actually made all of those drugs available through a, a chemist, through a pharmacist, over the counter, not just off the shelf, but over the counter, and you had to give your name and phone number, like when you want a strong headache pill. And um, you go onto a database, but you know we then incentivize the chemists to you know, create profit for them, more profit than the drug use, so that they actually get people into rehabilitation programs. Now, we've seen um, countries like Portugal spend heaps amount of money on the drug war and then turn around and reinvest that into healthcare and rehabilitation. And their drug consumption has halved. It's dramatically reduced. They've had good results. They're winning the drug war, they're winning the drug war by legalizing drugs or, or at least decriminalizing it. So the other thing is if we make it readily and cheaply available, we remove the economic incentive uh, and stimulus for the drug barons to promote this, their huge use. They lose the profits because there's a serious competitor in the space, government. They lose the ability to compete with law enforcement. They lose the uh, ability to control the prices and the profit and incentive is gone out of it for them and they then take away the, the supply and marketing to, to the poor dumb people who experiment and get addicted to drugs. Um, now, the goal has to be, whatever the details that need working in that, it, it's just a starting point, it's just a suggestion. I'm, I'm not saying it's a silver bullet to solve the world's problems, but imagine if, if we reduced the profit from drugs, eliminated the profitability, and, and found a way to funnel and redirect all the drug users into rehabilitation. Of course, there's always going to be people who refuse those, and there's always going to be some drug users, just like there's always going to be some people who just love living on welfare and don't want the satisfaction of earning their own income and, and independence from the government. Um, but we can significantly reduce the problem. I believe we can significantly reduce the problem. Um, but, you know, maybe we can stop short of decriminalizing it or, or legalizing it. Maybe we can just supply it through those those channels. And, and so it, it's actually the the black market that's illegal, while the, the regulated market is easy and widely available with but as a doorway into rehabilitation as as opposed to a. Um, anyway, it's, it's got um, uh, it's worth discussing, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I certainly uh, favour the uh, the legalisation uh, of drugs. Like I said, not because I think it's good, but because I think that you know prohibition does mm. more harm than good. But I definitely agree that you know what you su uh, suggested, even if it's just a modest you know decriminalisation regulation, is still a lot mm. better than than what we have now. Uh, I'm definitely not a, you know, li libertarian purist who, you know, believes that, you know, it should be, mm. you know, all, all or all or nothing. Like I certainly think think that, you know, we should try yeah. and find the 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 middle ground, especially, you know, conservatives and and libertarians. Because I think that, you know, the worst worst thing we can do on these uh, and they are contentious issues, you know, prostitution and drugs is, you know, just say, oh, well, you know, your views are, you know, completely insane and just, you know, refuse to, you know, work work with each other anymore because, you know, we, um, you know, have, you know, different strong opinions on, on, on this issue. I think that, you know, we we, we should, you know, be yeah. able to, to have these, you know, discussions and still be able to work together. Yeah, 
No, I agree. And look, uh, the conservative approach isn't a, a fixed position that's immovable. Um, the conservative approach is, is let's move forward carefully. Um, let's, let's hold on to and treasure uh, the things that have been proven by time, such as marriage um, and the, the traditional definition of family, um, such as, well, I mean, that, that's a huge one. But, you know, the drug war, I think we can say that's a failure. It's not working. And so the conservative approach is let's move forward carefully. What else can we try? Um, you know, rather than decriminalising or legalising drugs, maybe we can go this half step, like you, you said, halfway. Instead of being purist and dogmatic uh, about, you know, our favourite pet philosophy, let's actually see if something else works because this clearly isn't. You know what, the other thing is, is it's a huge culture problem. Um, the, the concept that we're just animals and not worth anything is inherently anti-Christian. Again, that, that foundational value that makes Western democracy so great is imago dei. You are worth uh, the same as everybody else and of great worth, higher than any animal, because you have the in bear the image of God. And, and look, even that posture, even if you don't believe in God, that posture is, is missing and, and human life is, is now cheap. And, uh, and that's a terrible evolution in, in Western democracy. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.